Am I trapped in my karmas or can I change my destiny? Once there was a young man who in search of knowledge uh, came across a village where he found uh, uh, an enlightened uh, person and he started learning from this person. And this person was a Brahmin, uh, uh, you know, the high caste Hindu order. And he spent a few years with his uh, guru, with his master. And his master, who was actually married, while he was studying under him, his wife became pregnant, the master's wife. And it so happened that uh, the day his wife had to give birth, his master had gone away from the village just a few days ago on some very important task. And before he could come back, the master's wife was in labor. So this young man took it upon himself to stand outside the house of his master and not allow anyone to go in, except of course for the village uh, maternity nurse who went in to deliver the baby. But soon he sees a divine being, like radiating light, approach the house and wants to go in. And this young boy stops him, no, you cannot go in. It's my master's wife, she's under labor, she's giving birth to a child and you cannot go in at this time. And this being says, but I am Brahma, I am the maker of destiny, I write destinies of people. And I have come here to write the destiny of the child who is going to be born. So the young man relents and said, okay, but on one condition, that when you come out, you have to tell me the destiny of this child. And Brahma agrees. So he goes in, the baby is born, he can hear the baby cry. So he comes out and says, uh, you know, the baby has been born, congratulations, it's a boy. And so the young man asks Brahma, so what destiny have you written? He says, this man will lead a very hard life. He will never have anything more than two kgs of rice and a cow in his home. Now the young student is shattered. He says, but he is the son of such a learned man. How can he live such a hard life? Brahma says, it's not really in my hands. It's because of his past karmas that he has, this destiny has to be written for him. And the learnings because he has to take in this life. And he goes away. A few years later, it so happens, kind of history repeats itself. His master's wife is pregnant again. And again, somehow, the master is absent from the village on an important, important task to another town. And again, the student takes guard in front of the house because his master's wife is about to deliver another baby. The Brahma appears before him again to write the destiny of the second child. The boy lays the same condition that I must know the destiny of the child when you come out of the house. Brahma goes in, a baby is born and the boy can hear the cries of the baby and Brahma soon comes out and he asks Brahma, so what destiny have you written this time? Brahma says, congratulations, your master has had a baby girl, but her destiny is that she will be a prostitute. Now the boy is totally stunned and shocked. He says, but she is the daughter of a great learned person. How can she live or be a prostitute? The Brahma says, this is again her own karmas and the lessons she has to learn in this life and goes away. 
A few years pass and the disciple or the student thinks he has learned all that he could from his master and so he moves on you know, to, to do his own practice, his own meditation in the mountains, in the Himalayas and he does his own penance and meditation for many years, many years. After I think 15 or 20 years have passed, he suddenly remembers his guru. He says, I must go and visit my guru. And he wonders what has happened to his children. He comes back to the same house. Someone else is living there. He asks the neighbors, you know, there was this learned man who used to live here 15, 20 years ago. And where is he now? Oh, they said, oh, he and his uh, wife died, you know, of old age. And uh, then the student asks, who is not a student anymore, but the student of the master. But what happened to his children? Oh, then the neighbor sigh and say, you know, some very bad things happened to, you know, their children. Because when they passed away, they were still young and there was no one to take care of them. And, you know, the boy is working as a laborer and he barely has enough to eat. And the girl, she has become a prostitute and uh, she lives here and the boy lives there. So the, the, this young man, who is not so young anymore, realizes that the destiny has taken its course. The destiny has indeed come true. But he has the same question, like it has been asked to me. Can he change the destiny of these two young people? Because he owed such a debt of gratitude to his guru, to his master, from whom he did all his initial learning and training. There is something he wanted to give back to his guru. So first he went to the house of the boy, who was indeed leading a hard life as a daily laborer. And he goes to his house and sees he just has one cow in front of his home and just two little bags of rice in his uh, kitchen. He introduces himself to the boy and says, I don't know if you remember me, you were very small when I left your house, but I used to live with your parents and your father was my first guru and I have learned a lot from him. And I see your discondition and I would like to repay you back in some way for the all the blessings that your father has given to me. But I don't have any money. But if you follow my instructions precisely, you may be able to get out of this rut you are in. The boy listens to him and somehow trusts him. He has faint memory of this man living with them in the house. He says, tell me what I have to do. So the disciple says, I like you to sell your cow. Sell your cow and from all the money you get from the selling the cow, have a big feast. Use all the food that is in your house. By the end of the day, there should not be even a grain of rice left inside your house. And the boy is aghast. He says, no, but what will my family eat tomorrow? I sell my cow, I spend all my money by the evening. What will happen to me? He says, don't worry, have trust in me. So the boy does exactly as he's told. He sells the cow uses all the rice which is also in his house and has a big feast for all the villagers in the evening. Next day, he wakes up in the morning feeling a little dreadful. I have nothing to feed my family. But lo and behold, behold he goes out to his yard and he sees there is a cow standing there and there are two bags of rice in the kitchen again. He wonders where does this come from? So remember, 
Brahma's destiny is he will always have two bags of rice and a cow with him. So the disciple comes back to his house and says, See, you have not lost anything. I want you to repeat this every night. Sell the cow, get the money, get all the rice, feed all the hungry, do charity, feed all the poor in the house, in your village, in the neighboring villages. Make sure no one sleeps hungry where, next to where you are. Do Keep doing this work of charity for the rest of your life. And the boy does exactly that. Soon, of course, he's uh, you know, considered a, a well-known person, in, not just in his own village, but in villages around him. People consider him to be a great philanthropist. He's well-respected. Yet, he always has only two bags of rice and one cow with him. So he next goes to the daughter of his master. He visits her and introduces himself again. She was of course much younger when he left the house and she, ha she has hardly any recollection of him being there. But she is somehow attracted with the energy and the vibe this person is sending and tends to believe what he has said. He has no reason to lie in any case. He said, I know you need to live and are you happy where you are? And she said, how can I be happy? I'm very unhappy. And if there is anything you can do to, you know, relieve me of my misery, I will be most grateful. He says, okay. Then follow exactly as what I tell you. If any man wants to come and sleep with you, ask him for a string of pearls. And pearls used to be very expensive then, as some of you may or may not know, because there were no cultured pearls. And to be able to afford a, a string of pearls was almost uh, beyond the means of most, most persons. So he said, ask for a string of pearls as your fee before you sleep with a man. But she said, no one will be able to afford it. For miles around here, there's not even a single person who probably even owns a string of pearls. So how am I going to get a string of pearls? He said, well, try it. Try it for tonight. And see if you get a string of pearls. So as the evening came, she, start, she started ask, demanding a string of pearls and people were saying, what? You're not worth it. I can't give you a string of pearls. I'll go to somebody else. And so it was quite late in the evening, quite late at night when everyone came and went away. Just so, so shocked by her demand of a string of pearls to be, to be able to sleep with her. Finally, she saw a being of light. Almost it seemed like he was a being of light kind of a divine person, approached her and gave her a string of pearls to be able to sleep with her. The next day, the disciple came and visited her and said, what happened? She said, well, this divine being came last night and offered me a, a, a string of pearls. He said, he was no one but Brahma himself. So from now on, consider Brahma to be your husband and do not sleep with anyone unless they offer you a string of pearls. So every night, Brahma now had to appear in some guise or the other, taking a different form and offer her a string of pearls and sleep with her. And what she did, what did she do with these pearls? She was told by her father's disciple, do not keep these pearls with you. Sell these pearls next day 
in the morning and with all the money you get from these pearls do charity work fund schools feed the sages the hungry and the poor and the orphans and in no time she came to be known as a very virtuous person and one of the biggest philanthropists of that area who was taking care of so many children widows and the poor people in that area so after spending a month or two in that village at the disciple thought now his task is done he was satisfied with himself that he may have repaid some of his uh, teacher's debt that was on him and he was about to leave when brahma appeared before him and said what have you done now i have nothing to do but to supply 2 kg of rice and a cow to one person in the village every day in the morning and acquire a new shape every night and give a necklace of pearls to this woman and sleep with her but the disciple answered but that's the destiny you wrote you said she has to sleep with a different person every night as a prostitute so if no one else will do it you have to you said he he would always he will always have a cow and two bags of rice so so you are only fulfilling the destiny that you have written for them so the brahma said then what can i do the disciple answered well you can change the destiny change the destiny and then you can also go about your merry ways and they can also live happily so the brahma was forced to change their destiny so what we do their karmas of past life may have written their destiny for this life but their karmas in this life can rewrite that destiny can change that destiny and so that destiny can be changed like they say as you sow so shall you reap so as we do good deeds we or we do bad deeds we are writing our own destiny and that destiny is dependent on how we chose to write it so it is possible to change your destiny and if you want to change your destiny you should start doing it right now by rewriting your destiny by doing deeds which will enable you to have the destiny that you want if you have any uh, further questions or you would like to leave a feedback please do so on this page thank you for watching this video